word teaches us that the last days will be as the days of Noah, of Noah. And we're living in these particular days of Noah right now for the floods that are going on, the earthquakes, the wickedness, and the, and, and the, and the evil time, the evil imagination, the evil uh, words, or rather the evil thoughts. Because the thoughts perceive the evil vibration, perceptions, and sensations. And there's a connection with trauma-based mind control as well, as well as PTSD from our definition, which is post-traumatic slave slavery disorder, which first and chiefly affected the lost sheep of the Beta Israel and still does, but now affects many for various reasons and, and for various, yeah, for various reasons and in various seasons, this sense of trauma. We're living in a, can you imagine the earth itself with all the bloodshed, the trauma of the earth, and then the vibration of the earth as it, as it, as it emanates, that vibration goes out to the universe and how it's affecting other um, higher beings. And when we say higher beings, let's just say angels. You understand? Know they are higher beings, messengers. Yes, there are some fallen angels, and these fallen angels we mentioned before are working with fallen humanity to keep humanity enslaved to materiality and to keep them um, at a lower level of, of psychical ability or soul ability. Someone had mentioned um, to us years ago that... Um, that the devil doesn't really want beings to be um, too psycho. You know, they're against psychotropic drugs. You know, they call psychotropic drugs like marijuana because they don't want human beings. The fallen, the fallen angels don't want human beings to be too uh, psychically mature. You know, to be in a balanced soul state. This is why we live in a world full of so much trauma and evil and things that really wrench the conscience of, of human beings because they feed like vampires. They feed off of that. And see, what's interesting is that the same thing was going on in the days of Noah, in the days of Noah. This is why Noah is very important to the particular time that we're living in and seeing that this is the sabbatical, the second sabbatical portion known as Noah or Noah, or Bamarinya Noch. Let's, let's touch on this right here. So Noah in the, in the Hebrew, let's deal with it in the Hebrew, right? Mm. You have the noon, right? And then you have the chet, right? You have the noon and the chet, right? You have the noon and the chet. Now the nuka, you understand what we call the nekwit, Bamarinya, is the uh, is the holem right there for the for the old sound, and then we have the patach, the patach right there, right? And then now this is written this way, so literally it's a n, and this is a kh sound, but some Latter Day Jews say a ch sound, right? So of course you don't read it that way; you read it from from right to left. So you would read it like this, right? Um, and then they put this like this, and this is how you'll find it, Noah, Noah. Now they do something, can you see this? They do something very um, interesting in modern Hebrew. Now modern Hebrew is forced Hebrew. Why do we call it forced Hebrew? Well, it's not us alone that call it forced, forced Hebrew. It's other... Uh, Jews, and some of the white Jews, actually, who are more uh, conscious, they recognize the Hebrew today is from Yehuda. If you go back to Ben Yehuda, I think it was Yehuda, who, who um, is the father, known as the father of modern Hebrew. Uh, he was a European Jew, and he basically put together this Hebrew that the Jews, so-called Jews, say is the Hebrew. But we get to learn from the Ethiopic from the Ethiopic studies of the Gutas and, and the Royal Amharic, we really get the more proper orientation of the proper, the proper pronunciation of these words. Now, I, be, I wanted to begin off on Noah since this is the Noah portion. This is, this is, this is um, 
the Torah portion, second Torah portion that concerns Noah. Now, you can go to www.loj society and download the Sabbath house, what we call the Sabbath house readings, or Bamarinya. It's not all in Amharic, it's in English too, but we have Amharic on the cover, or Ye Samen Tawi Senbet or Rita Nebab, which means the weekly Sabbath Torah or five books of Moses reading. But within our within our readings, we also have the Nabiyad or the Haftarah readings, as well as the Adis Kidan or the Burit Hadash or the New Testament readings as well, to be full and complete as as Judeo Christians or as Hebrews because Yeshua is a Hebrew and therefore the New Testament without the Old Testament is, is grossly incomplete and the Old Testament without the New Testament basically is retarded. Uh, I, we hate to say it but you're still looking for the Moshiach and you don't want to accept him because he's a black man and that's just racist. You know what I mean? Not just racist, that's, that's, that's deadly to your soul, your, your psychic life. You know, but give thanks and praise that some of even the European Jews are beginning to recognize the truth of Rastafari and Rastafari revelation as it is. But let's touch on Noah for a moment. So now, if you look at this, this really could be said in this way, although the rules of modern Hebrew, the rules of modern Hebrew says it, it's not said this way. Some will say it could say no ha, no ha, no ha, right, no ha. But according to the modern Jewish um, rules of force Hebrew, when this patach is by a letter like chet, chet, right, or the ch sound, the kh or ch sound, well, like in the name Bach, it's not added afterwards, even though this is not O, this is not on, on ha, but this is no ha. But they say no, not no ha with the patak, it's actually noach. So this vowel here, it's a little, it's not very complicated, but you have to get a little, you know, wrap, I, 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 I want to say wrap your mind. That's another, that's another retarded saying because the mind is not shrink wrap or something. But if one can, can comprehend, overstand, let's stick with Rastafari. If one can overstand, begin to understand the basic rules. And then when, when you get to the point of saying, oh, that's when you really come to the point of over, you know, when that, that particular perception and sensation, when you get something and you're like, oh, that's when you overstand it. So when you overstand these rules right here, Noah, they say it, Noah. But now in the Ethiopic, right, in the Ethiopic, this name, Noah, is said like this. So well, first of all, let's write it. It's no, and then it's ch, right? No, this is no, and this is ch, right? Or noch, noch, noch. Now, Noah, I'm going to cut, we're going to cut to the chase a little bit on this, but we'll go through some details as we're able to, that Noah is related to this from ancient Egypt, and that's Ankh. So the Noah, the, no, no, the Noah, Noha, and the Ankh connection. Now, if you look at this, and you look at the Hebrew here, the Hebrew here, remember these vowels, the Nuka, have been added fairly recently within the last hundred or so years, especially by, I think it was uh, Ben Yehuda, who's the father of modern forced Hebrew. He was a European Jew, mostly spoke Yiddish and a little bit of bad Hebrew, and he said, we got to revive Hebrew as a living language, because Hebrew was called a dead language up until that time. So it was, I think, Ben Yehuda who was that driving force for um, uh, reclaiming a kind of a Hebrew, uh, this Hebrew that the Ashkenazis and others speak today. But then when we look at the Ethiopic, we can see the proper orientation of the square letters. Now, the square letters basically goes back to the time of Ezra, of Ezra in the Bible. You have the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, and they're the ones who, well, actually, Ezra was the one who, even the Jewish Encyclopedia says that he is the one who squared 
the round Hebrew letters. In other words, the Hebrew letters were more in the orientation of the Ethiopic, you understand? And it was it was Isra who basically squared the letters into the form that we know today as the Masoretic, so forth and so on Hebrew. We just give you a little bit of that background, but look up it, look it up, look it up, look up it, yeah, look it up and you'll find more of it, you know, seek this out for yourself. Now, the reason why we want to make this connection, because we want to first of all deal with the Shem, or the Sim, the name of Noah. So this right here equals this. This is Ethiopic right here, the Ethiopic, Noch, which, which we cut to the chase for a moment, is related to the Ankh, the Ankh. Now, the Ankh, the proper... Um, interpretation can be found Ethiopically because the proper interpretation if you go back to the to the goodness you understand you will have this right here um, you will have Anecha 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 or Necha Ancha means to be long or be extended to be long or to be extended it's like in the Psalm Psalm 23 where it says, um, I shall abide in the house of the Lord. What's, what's your King James translation of this? We know from them, Harak and the Gutters, but the Gutters, Psalm 23, gives you the key to the Ankh. It actually gives you the key to the Ankh, to, to defining it from a living language. And Ethiopic, or the Gutters, is a living language. Now, people say, no, it's a dead language, because I heard, yeah, you heard, but you didn't go check it out for yourself. You heard, you can hear a lot of things. We say, well, we're teaching, go check it out for yourself. That's how you know it. You just could believe it or trust I and I, but go check it out for yourself, because then you'll know it. Then then you won't be dowdy, pouty about this, about this way, truth, and life. Where it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I think it's the idea of dwelling, that dwelling, that, that word to dwell. But then in the Gutters, when they define mountains as being tall mountains, it also used the Anacha for, for tall to say they're very long mountains. But in an abstract sense, that length, just like mountains abide almost forever, like mountains are thought to be this this firm structure, and then we have the pyramidical shape as well, you understand? And then in the scriptures, when it mentions mountains in the Bible, mountains um, interpreted symbolically is to relate to kingdoms. So in vision, when people get visions of mountains, it's related to kingdoms. When we have Donna L's vision of that stone that wasn't cut by human hands that's hewed out of a mountain, it is... A, a kind of a government coming from a kingdom. In other words, a government being hewed out of a kingdom. Some say that is the reestablishment of the kingdom of David in Ethiopia. Others like us see this as this movement right now being hewed without hands out of the kingdom of the king of kings and his imperial, uh, his, his majesty, the king of kings and his Christ, his imperial majesty. Now, be that as it may, the link for Noah means, now, Noah also has another meaning, right? Noah, they say, means, some say it means consolation. Now, some say it means rest as well. But let's look at, begin off this beginning part of our Torah portion reading, right? And let us just touch on, what's the Genesis chapter 6, verse 9 to Genesis eleven thirty-two. We're just going to touch on the first part of it. It's 6 and 9. 6 and 9, and at, at, at the verse 9 it says, these are the generations of Noch. We say Noch. They say Noach. We say they're incorrect, and we have the proof. What do they say? We're waiting. It says, Noch was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noch walked with God, and Noch walked with Hashem. He walked with God. Now, here in the Schofield, it has a footnote here. It says, Noah and Enoch, Hanok, are the two antediluvians, in other words, before the great deluge or flood, anti, well, anti, not anti, but antediluvians, 
of whom it is said that they, quote, walked with God, that they walked with God. Now, remember what Christ teaches. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, based on this, walking with God didn't mean that he had to walk with a, a physical reality by himself, like I'm walking with you, you walk with me, but he walked with that spirit and truth. He walked in spirit and in truth, and to walk in spirit and in truth is to walk with God, or Hashem. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. Now, Enoch, quote, translated that he should not see death. So, Enoch was trans, what, latent the importance of translation, right? Enoch was trans... Now, notice something. Translation deals with word, doesn't it? But in this sense, Enoch, a human being, was not just translated in his name, but his whole being. You understand? Know because everything in this creation is based on the word. The best example of it is the Matrix movie. I'm sure you've seen it before where I think either he puts on glasses or there's some part of one of, part of, one of the movies where... Everything, the whole matrix is word. Everything is like word. It's code. It's all code. Well, the same thing. The same thing of this reality, too, that everything is based on the word and is code. So when it says that Hadnok translated so he would not see death, in other words, he a carbon organic being walking with God, which is the spirit and truth, was able to be translated you understand? In other words, he didn't die, but he, but basically we say ascend. He he teleported. He star jumped like Abba Kedus. He he got off this rock. In other words, he was translated. But the the key is translation. Make a note of that. Study translation. Translation doesn't doesn't mean just translating a word from one language to the next. In fact, that's child's play. Translating a word from one one language to the next language like what we're doing here. This is more child's play. Even though many of us have been denied and deprived it, the real translation is to translate this as Enoch translated it. You know, as Enoch was, rather, translated, that he should not see death. Hebrews 11 and 5. And he becomes a type of the Kedusan. He's a type of the saints or the holy ones, the ones set apart or set aside, who will be, quote, caught up. Remember, we say that there is a rapture, but it's just not the way they've been telling you, like somebody's going to rapture and my clothes are going to fall off or something like that, you know, like a naked body rapture or something like that. No, 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 no. You, you know what I mean? Not in that sense. But first, there is a spiritual being caught up, caught up to a certain consciousness, a certain perception. You ever been around folks where you think something is so easy for them to see and understand and they just don't get it? And these people you know for a long time and you're trying to explain it every way and they just don't get it? And then maybe if you're in public, somebody else passes by and the passerby gets it? You know, the, the one passing by, not even all involved, and they, and they kind of get it. But the person that you know just don't, in other words, that person who passed by was caught up into your conversation. They got it. The same way that those of us who are Kedusan are to be caught up, and even spiritually we are caught up in a different sort of consciousness where other ones around us just may not get it. And don't hate them. Don't fight. You see, if you sort of have all this negative feeling, that now makes you earthbound. You understand? Basically, it's almost like you were caught up, but you were pulling that, that too much pull. You were tethered to the earth, and that pulled you back down to this materiality. You understand? Uh, materialism. So the, the saints will be caught up before the great tribulation. Now, the way that's been interpreted, and this is all connected with this second portion, the portion of Noah. Though if you go to last year's videos and teachings, we touched on a different aspect of it because the word is so rich. You understand? It's like the richest ground that you could ever could go in and find all sort of diamonds and rubies and silver and precious, precious, very precious things. I mean, pre so precious, not only can we enjoy them here, but we can enjoy them there and elsewhere. You understand, especially if we have a rightful or a righteous claim to it. 
in our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So they will be caught up before the great tribulation. Now, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, verses 14 to 17, Revelation 3 and 10, Daniel 12 and 1, Matthew 24 and 21. Now, Noah, or Noah, Noah, or in the Ethiopic, Noah, connected with the Ankh, you understand? With the Ankh, because um, the Ankh is symbol of what? They said the Ankh is symbol of life. Well, who lived? It was Noah. It was Noah. Noah was the one who lived. And he traveled in a boat. And go back to Egypt, the mysteries, and there's a lot of ancient boat um, metaphors that are used not just in traveling by boat in a mundane way, but in a spiritual way. This is all the legacy of Noah. This is all because of the legacy of Noah. So when we go back to the earliest forms of Egyptian religion, they would tell us that the gods came, and how many of them were there? There were eight, the Ogda'od. Very interesting, right? Okay, so Noah was preserved through the flood. He is a type of the Israelitish, those of us who are Israelite, Ish and Isha, male, female, people who will be preserved, preserved. Notice what it says. They will be what? Preserved. Through the tribulation. You see, some say we're already in the tribulation. No, we will say what Christ said. This, these things, when you see these things, they're the beginning. We've, we've been seeing the beginning. That's what a guy who tried to predict when um, he said, you know, when, when the end of the world. He was looking at the, the Sabbath. He was trying to calculate it like that. But you have to remember why they can't calculate. These people who try to calculate the end of the world, although at some times the signs are very great that the end of the world is just around the corner or they try to predict it on a certain day, is because the Almighty, it's just like the Nibiru. It's just like the Nibiru. They said the Nibiru, this, this, this planet that's traveling, it seems to have an intelligence, there's an intelligence connected with it. Well, there's an intelligence that's also connected with the affairs of men and people on this earth and the course of things. And that intelligence we know as Hashem. We know as, as the name or as the true God, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Adonenu. But these now who will be preserved are a type of Noah. And so, so therefore Noah is important to understand Noah. What kind of type is Noah? And what's the real truth of Noah? We must begin with the word. The word is the clearest way to avoid a lot of and, and a lot of deception and to be able to tell like you know, like History Channel got a lot of programs and there's a lot of videos out there. Something very interesting. And and they may appeal to your 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 senses, your 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 five foolish senses, you know, like your physical senses. But your spiritual sense may be deadened. You see, your spiritual sense comes alive when you start studying Torah and you start studying the scripture and you start studying so that it makes sense. Some things don't make sense at first. You'd be like, I don't get it. Well, keep studying it. Don't dismiss it. Oh, this can't be make any sense because I don't get it. Because then you are getting in a prideful state and a false mind and a negative state. You're saying that if your little know-nothing self doesn't understand it, it can't be real, even though this has sustained longer than you are sustaining. You know what I'm saying? But be that as it may, um, Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 5 to 9 is a connection. So Noah also connects with the flood, and Noah connects with the tribulation. Now ask yourself, the world and earth that we're in right now, is it going through a period of tribulation? I mean, there's all kinds of tribulation among men and people. There's wars and ru rumors of wars. There's all kinds of um, immoralities that have become PC, you know, politically correct. You know, there's the, all, the, all the signs are there. Investigate it for yourself, just like they have an investigation. And they say, well, we got this one bit of information, but... I have a good feeling about this, but we need to get more information. The Bible says two or three witnesses. Do we have two or three witnesses, you understand, that we're living in these days of Noah? Oh, yes, we do. So we need to understand and overstand what the days of Noah 
really were like. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters. This is just the basic. This is the basic um, orientation. First of all, the name. We want to touch on the Hebrew, the pronunciation, and then the Ethiopic. This is the Ethiopic key. As we go forward, we're going to get more into the metaphysical Bible, the MO. We want to deal with the MO. What's the MO of Noah? The metaphysical understanding of Noah. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned. Shalom Rastafari.